I'm Miss Christy, and we are here for another lesson. And this is part two of our lesson we started last week for the special holiday that we are celebrating today. And do you know what that is? Yes, it's Easter Sunday. You might have heard people also call it Resurrection Day. What important event do we remember today? Hmm? Maybe this will give you a clue. Why do we celebrate Easter? Right, because last week we talked about how Jesus died, right? Well, on Easter, we're celebrating that he rose from the dead. He was resurrected. Easter is such an exciting day because we remember Jesus' resurrection. That's a big word that means Jesus rose from the dead. Say that word with me. Resurrection. 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 Yeah, you got it. The resurrection was a very important event that really happened. And the Bible tells us all about it. But first, let's see how much we can remember about what happened when Jesus died. Do you remember what we talked about last week? Right? Remember how Jesus came into town? He was riding on a what? Yes, he was riding on a donkey. The people welcomed him and they threw their cloaks and tree branches on the road for Jesus to ride over. That was how they greeted kings. The people were excited because they'd heard about the amazing miracles Jesus had done. And many of them thought that their king would come and fight the Romans so they could be free again. Ah, is that why Jesus came? Is that why he came? To save the people from the Romans? No. Why did Jesus come? To save them from their what? Right, their sins, right? Very good. Our sins are our biggest problem because sin separates us from God. Jesus chose to be our savior and save us by taking the punishment that we deserve for our sins when he died on the cross. When Jesus died, it seemed like it was the end, but it wasn't. And that's where we left off last week. Let's find out what happened next. All right. So after Jesus died, a rich man named Joseph went to Pilate, the Roman governor, and asked if he could take the body of Jesus and give him a proper burial. Pilate agreed, and Joseph took the body of Jesus down from the cross, okay, down from the cross. He wrapped him up in linens, which were strips of cloth, and covered them with sweet-smelling spices. Now, Here's a picture of the tomb, okay? This tomb was like a cave carved from stone. It wasn't like the graves we dig in the ground today. The tomb of a wealthy man like Joseph usually had an open doorway with some steps leading into one or more rooms where they laid the bodies. But this was a new tomb. No body had been placed in it until Joseph put Jesus in there. Jesus' mother and some other women went with Joseph 
to see where he had laid Jesus' body. The Sabbath day was about to begin at sunset, so they would have to wait until the morning of after the Sabbath to, to come back and take care of the body. Joseph rolled a huge stone in front of the entrance of the tomb and then went home. So even though Jesus was dead, right? He was nailed to the cross with his hands and his feet. They pierced him in the side and he didn't even wiggle. He was dead. But even though he was dead, the Jewish leaders who hated him still hated him. And they were still nervous about it. Even though he was dead, how could Jesus hurt them anymore? So they decided to do something even more. Listen so you can tell me what they did. Let's read in Matthew chapter 27. So I want you at home to get your Bibles out and follow along with me. So you can push pause while you flip to Matthew chapter 27. And we're going to go almost all the way to the end of that. That's a long chapter to verses 65. Okay. And then hit play when you've got it and ready to read along with me. Okay, so here we are in Matthew chapter 27, verses 65 and 66. Pilate said, take some soldiers and go guard the tomb the best way you know. So they all went to the tomb and made it safe from thieves. They did this by sealing the stone to the entrance and then putting soldiers there to guard it. All right. So these men remembered that Jesus would rise on the third day because remember, Jesus told them. He told his disciples, you know, a couple weeks ago that the Son of Man would come so he would be lifted up and that he would rise again on the third day. But the disciples at that time were like, what? What are you talking about? Like, Remember how with the parables, sometimes they got it, sometimes they didn't get it? Well, when Jesus was talking about himself dying and being resurrected, they didn't get it. But they still noticed, people still talked about it, that he said this thing, even if they believed it or not. So even Jesus' enemies remembered what he said about the third day. So they went to Pilate and asked him for some extra help to make sure that Jesus' disciples weren't gonna come and try to make it look like, like some thieves came and stole Jesus' body uh, to make it look like he was resurrected because he wasn't there anymore or some kind of prank like that. So what did Pilate tell them they could have in what we read? Yes, it said they could have a guard, one of their Roman soldiers. So Pilate gave them some guards to stand at the tomb. When they sealed the, then they sealed the stone. So that was like taking Gorilla Glue all the way around and sticking it right there so that nothing was going to move that big stone out of the way. They thought there was no way that Jesus was coming back. All right? So did Jesus come back? Raise your hand if you think he came back from the dead. I see some hands up. Well, let's find out. Of course, he did rise.
rise from the dead. All four Gospels, okay? In the book of Matthew, in Mark, in Luke, and John, they all told how Jesus rose from the dead. And they tell us what happened that Sunday morning at Jesus' resurrection. So let's read that. That is Matthew 28. So we're going to go to the next chapter and we're going to read 1 through 10. Are you ready? Okay. The day after the Sabbath day was the first day of the week. At dawn on the first day, Mary Magdalene and another woman named Mary went to look at the tomb. At that time, there was a strong earthquake. Woo! Everything's shaken. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven. The angel went to the tomb and rolled that stone away like, psh, no problem to roll that out of the way. Then the angel sat on the stone. He was shining as bright as lightning. His clothes were as white as snow. The soldiers guarding the tomb were very frightened of the angel. They shook with fear and then became like dead man. So they probably fainted, <laughs> right? So that was amazing. Let's keep going. The angel said to the women, don't be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, the one who was killed on the cross, but he is not here. He has risen. He has risen from death just as he said he would. Come and see the place where his body lay. And go quickly and tell his followers, say to them, Jesus has risen from death. He is going into Galilee. He will be there before you. You will see him there. Then the angel said, now I have told you. Okay. So that was amazing, wasn't it? Jesus had risen from the dead. Jesus didn't need any help to get out of the tomb. He is God. A stone wasn't going to keep him inside. The angel rolled the stone out of the way so people could see that the tomb was empty. Jesus was already gone. We didn't see him walk out, right? He was already gone. Who told the woman the good news? Yes, the angel told them the good news. What happened to the guards when they felt the earthquake and saw the angel? Oh, yes, they fainted. What did the angel tell the women to do? Yeah, to go tell the others, the disciples, the good news. And what was the good news? Yeah, that Jesus is alive, just like he said he would. Very good. Now, Jesus wanted his followers to know that he was really alive. So he came to see them. John tells us what he did. All right? So let's go back and we're going to leave Matthew and we're going to go to the book of John. So right after Matthew is Mark and then there's Luke. Luke. And then there is John. So find John and go to chapter 20. And then once you find chapter 20, look for verse 19, okay? 
And then you can push pause while you find it and then push play when you're ready to begin. Okay, so here's one verse, verse 19. It says, it was the first day of the week. That evening, the followers were together. The doors were locked because they were afraid of the Jews. Then Jesus came and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. Hmm. Wait a second here. So the door was shut. The door was locked, probably barricaded, because the disciples were thinking the Jews were coming after them, right? Maybe they thought they stole the body or something. They were scared. They were all inside. And then all of a sudden, boom, here's Jesus. Peace out. <laughs> no, I don't think that's what he said. He said, peace be with you. How do you get in there? How do you get in there? Mm. Yes, the first day of the week is Sunday. This happened on the same day that Jesus rose from the dead. Most of the disciples were together behind those locked doors because they were afraid. They were afraid that the Jewish leaders would send more guards to come and arrest them. Suddenly, Jesus arrived. Jesus appeared in the room. Poof. How would you feel if Jesus suddenly was standing right here in front of us? How would you feel? Especially after you thought he was dead. Yeah. Do you think you'd see a ghost? Maybe you might be a little scared. Or maybe you're like, oh, I missed you so much. Right? There could be lots of ways. But the disciples must have been scared because what did Jesus say? Yeah, peace be with you. So if they were worried or anxious or nervous, they needed peace that only Jesus can give. Jesus spoke to them and he showed them the marks that were on his hands from the nails on the cross. And the disciples believed that it really was Jesus. He had risen from the dead. Jesus appeared to other followers besides the women and his disciples. He showed himself to many people during that time. The Bible says over 500 people witnessed Jesus after he had resurrected. Soon it was time, though, for Jesus to go to heaven. He couldn't stay. He couldn't stay how he walked with them before. He was different. His body was different. And he couldn't stay. He reminded his disciples that they were witnesses to his death and witnesses to his resurrection. They saw him die. They saw him put the nails in his hands and in his feet, right? Now Jesus told him it is your job, their job to tell everyone they meet, everyone, the good news. Everything that happened. And then Jesus was taken back up into heaven. His disciples weren't sad. They were filled with joy. They immediately began sharing the good news with everyone they met. They were no longer afraid. Okay, They had something in them that gave them some courage and bravery that they never had before. They knew Jesus was alive. And that they were forgiven. Because remember the disciples? Remember what they did to Jesus last week? 
Yeah, they all ran away from him. They didn't stay with him when he was arrested. They denied knowing him. And they thought that, you know, Jesus couldn't love them after that. Here they were, not even recognizing Jesus and staying away from him when he, after everything he had done for them. But they now know, after seeing Jesus and being with him for these few days, that he had forgiven them. Of course, he knew what they would do, right? He knew what they would do because he's God, right? He knows everything. He knew they were going to run away, and he knew he could still use them to spread the gospel. So they were filled with joy. They were forgiven. No matter what happened, they had Jesus' promise of heaven when they died. And guess what? We have that same promise because Jesus died and paid the price for our sins as well. Everyone who believes and puts their trust in him will have their sins forgiven and they will live forever with him. That's why we can say, Happy Resurrection Day! Right? Awesome. Well, last week we said, Hosanna! And who remembers what that means? Yes, yeah, save me now. Right? Is what they were saying to Jesus when he rode into Jerusalem on the donkey. Hosanna! Save me now. And even though it wasn't what they thought, that it would be from the Romans, that he saved them, he saved them from something so much more important, their sins. He did save them when he died on the cross and then rose from the grave. And he was alive again. Happy Resurrection Day. Okay. Well, let's take a look at what your homework is. And I hope you're all finishing up. Here I put our Lent chain here on our stage. It is very long, and I hope you had fun doing these activities at home during this, because they should be all finished up by this Easter Sunday. All right. So, here is the take-home sheet, and these will be out in the mailbox if you can't join us this Sunday, so you can grab them at your convenience. Here's a little maze, and then the new memory verse. Remember, did I bring it? I did not bring it with me to show you, but we can say it. The new memory verse is here. Let me get close. Just for Easter, we have this verse, right? John eleven twenty five. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Okay? So that's for both classes. And there's a coloring sheet, some Easter coloring sheets there for you. For the older class, we have your class notes, and you have to circle the cross if it's true. And if it's false, then you can circle the Easter egg, okay, as you read through. And you have a couple other verses to read. And here's something, a code to help you with the memory verse. And then here's a search word, the memory verse again, okay? Right, and some coloring sheets as well. And for both classes, we are going to do this in class, but this would be fun to do at home. And this is to make a fun snack. Okay, 
This is called the edible empty tomb. And it takes a graham cracker here on the bottom. And you can put some frosting that maybe you tinted green with a drop of two of food coloring in there. And then you put a mini chocolate donut on top. And then you find any kind of little round cookie or cracker that can be the stone in front of it. And then you can just write on a piece of paper, Jesus is risen. And you can stick it into your donut with a toothpick. And then this will be fun to make. And it will be fun to eat. Ah, yum, yum, yum. All right. Okay, let's pray. Lord, when the women came to the tomb where Jesus was laid and the angel rolled away the stone, they could see that it was empty. And the angel told them that Jesus had risen just as he said. The women were so happy and they ran to tell the disciples the good news. And then when Jesus came and visited the disciples behind the locked doors, they were full of joy and they couldn't wait to tell others the good news. Lord, this Easter, this resurrection day, Jesus, I just hope that we all remember the true meaning of why you came to earth as a little baby and why you spent time being tempted and going through things that would hurt and just all the same things that happened to us happened to you although you didn't sin and many times we have. Especially for you to be crucified on that cross when you did not do anything wrong, but you took all that punishment for us, for me, for my passengers, my family, Lord, and everyone. All we have to do is believe why you came, what you did, that you rose again, and that you are sitting with the Father and to share this good news with everyone and turn from our old ways, turn from our sinful ways and follow you. When we hear your voice say, come follow me. We thank you, Lord, for everything you did for us this day, these three or four days, for all the time. <laughs> And we're so glad that we have your book, your holy, inspired word to read and know exactly who you are. We love you, Lord. We pray and lift up all of our passengers from Genesis Junction to you that they may be healthy and happy. And if there's anything they need, they can let me know. Always. Jesus' name, in your name, amen. Amen, and we will see you back at the junction next week. Bye-bye.